what? It's a Saturday and the fantasy footballers have a show? Yeah, it's almost fantasy football season. So get ready, buckle up, lock it down, and we're answering your questions. Like this video, subscribe, leave comments. Also, have a great weekend. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Nasty Boy. Mm, thank you. I wasn't sure which podcast I was at, but I knew I was nasty. So nasty. Welcome in, everybody. I'm your host today, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Right, joined by the Nasty Boy. <laughs> Andy uh, will be back. We'll have the trifecta. Yes. Coming. Full, full strength as we power into the season because what do we got uh, it is july 9th saturday welcome to the first saturday show of the season one of what do we got four four lined up yeah who knows we'll just show up and we'll hit record if the, the time is right but welcome in yes the season is approaching rapidly we got training camp here in just a couple of weeks then August hits, we're five shows a week. And make sure you're ready. Make sure you're ready for all those drafts. The Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. That is our off-season draft product. Just jam-packed with all the fantasy goodness that you need to prepare. We're talking you know, tons of tools for, for research, for building your own opinions. We have 100 video profiles where we break down uh, you know, just like two to three minutes on on the the top drafted players like just i know a uh, lot this thing of is packed. oh yeah i mean we spend half a year working on it every year but um i know a lot of people they end up getting the ultimate draft kit you know right you know right before their drafts right and that's fine you know you're still gonna dominate but it's like if you're gonna spend the money at that point and and get the ultimate draft kit improve your toilet time for the next you know Absolutely. two months because there is so much reading so much watching now with all the videos if you know if you're illiterate it doesn't even matter you can watch you can watch the videos why are you attacking people oh i'm not attacking people i'm i'm here for the illiterate okay that's okay. why we make these videos mike then this year we have uh really highlighted the cheat sheet creation where there you could do a whole bunch of custom things for that i suggest you check it out follow us on the social medias instagram.com slash fantasy footballers or also on Instagram, all three of us there, at Andy Holloway, at Jason FFL. I am at FF Hitman. Let's get into this quick question. Hey, ballers. Rob from Minnesota. I'm in a league where the winner from the previous year gets to change one rule for the upcoming season. Currently, we are super flex with two RBs, two wide receivers, a tight end, kicker, and a defense. What change would you make that you think would be fun for our league? Thanks. Love the show. Well, for this particular league, it's, uh, it's, it's super easy. It, I mean, it's staring us right in the face. Yeah, he said kicker. Yeah. I mean, get that garbage out of your league. Remove the kicker. I don't, you could just remove it altogether or change it into just another flex. Uh, but overall, Jason, do you have a, I, a I rule was, that you want to change? So I, ha I saw the question earlier, like what rule would I change? And I thought it was for my league. I didn't realize this was like, you know, voicemail helping someone – uh, specifically, who gets a unilateral decision, which is a lot of fun. That's a lot of power. That is a lot of power. Um, and so, you know, I had my own things that I was thinking about. But as he was talking about his league, we said, you know, uh, it's super flex, two, two running backs, two wide receivers. In the super flex, I like a deep league. I like wide receivers um, to come up a little bit. So I would say go three wide receivers. But rem Basically, the single rule would be take the kicker and turn it into a wide receiver. If you want to turn it into a flex, uh, a second flex, that's great too. Either one of those, um, that's certainly what I would do in that league. Yeah, and we have been, Jason and I specifically, big proponents of let's equalize quarterback yardage where a quarterback runs for 10 yards, that's a point. A mm -hmm, quarterback mm -hmm, mm -hmm. throws for 10 yards – that is not it is not a point because they need 25 yards to get that point and it I don't know. Mike, it, do you love Trey Lance for fantasy football this I year? I 
love him for Mike, fantasy. is Trey Lance a great NFL quarterback? Uh, TBD. Mike, but, is Trey Lance a great NFL quarterback? Currently, no. No, he's not. He couldn't beat out Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, he's... he's well, he, hurt, he hurt his fingy. Oh, oh guy. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, no, I, I, my point is, it's, you want, I want real NFL quality to be reflected in fantasy football. And it's not. Now, and the, the great part about Andy not being here today is is no one gets to argue against right. us about the value that a rushing quarterback brings to the real NFL over passing. Because the reality is, if he rushes for 10 yards, it gets a first down, or he passes for 10 yards, it gets a first down. It's the same thing for that team. That does remind me of the rule I would bring up. Uh, fantasy managers named Andy no longer have first-round picks. Ooh, man. I would say, if I don't it was know. my league, I would say fancy managers not named Jason oh. don't get first-round picks. But, you know, yeah, you my, do. Mine was a little targeted. Yours was just Mine was very beneficial. targeted, just for my own good and glory. On today's show, it's, it's a good old-fashioned mailbag episode. Uh, and the news is a little bit light, you know, just some smatterings of puff pieces. Like Chase Edmonds, you know, he's... Uh, on track to track be the, the lead, lead guy, role. which he should be, and I think right yes. now he's undervalued in drafts. Absolutely. I mean, you're – so Jason is a best ball fanatic these days. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. you're doing a uh, – The Bulldog. A, yeah, you're doing the – is that the one you're sharing with Kyle? Yeah, that's one of them, yeah. And what round are you in? We are in round 10. 10, yes. 10. And one of the players that you are considering uh, targeting here in round 10 is Chase Edmonds. That's like, right. That is absurd to me that Chase Edmonds, who feels like he's locked in to be the starting running back for the Miami Dolphins. Yes, they brought in Raheem Mostert, who, what's his injury timeline? We just don't know. Uh, and Raheem Mostert, just, no one's injury prone, but Raheem Mostert's body. Well, he's does, currently injured. So <laughs> Raheem Mostert's body does not like to play NFL football. And then you have like Sony Michelle, who yeah, he had a. I mean, he had a good season filling in for the Rams when he was getting volume, but he is not the archetype that fits this particular offense that's coming over from from uh, San Francisco. You need speed at the running back position. The team, granted, the old regime had was trying like everything they could to move on from Miles Gaskin. So I. Yeah, I mean, I, they, and they gave Chase Edmonds, you know, two not, years, twelve million, not crazy money, but enough money that says. You are going to be our guy. So yeah. I've, I've, I've risen on Chase Edmonds. I, you've talked about that. You were rising on Chase Edmonds as, as well, and a starting running back for what should be a decent offense. Adding Tyree Kill, if Tua can get it done, a starting running back that late is outrageous. He won't go there in your home drafts, but he's still going way later. Yeah, right than, now he's the running back thirty-seven. Which is that is absurd. I I agree. Uh, there are not thirty six teams in the NFL. <laughs> All right, let's get into the mailbag. 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 Ooh, yeah. All right. Apparently, the 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 staff, the production staff, really wants us to talk about Superflex. They're trying to make this a Superflex Saturday. Oh, there's a lot of lot of people playing that, and we don't. Dozens. Dozens of people <laughs> no. around the globe are playing Superflex. No, Superflex is super <laughs> popular. We It is not our go-to uh, preferred format, um, but you know, I, I play in some Superflex, and it's enjoyable as well. Bro I think Brooks likes it better than, uh, than Classic. If I had to choose, yeah. If I were to start a new league, I think I would go Superflex. So that's your rule change, Brooks, is to go Superflex? Well, his league was already Superflex. Yeah, I guess it is. All right. Well, would this, you go triple flex? Oh, just go triple I mean, super. Triple super. No, no, no. Oh, so that's man. a. It's a super duper. That's what. That's it. Is what it's called. The no, super and, duper flex. And actually, removing kickers would still be the top of the list. All right. The super flex. So this question comes in from Instagram from Young Mamba ninety six. Would you draft Josh Allen in the first round or go running back? No, I this would, is in a super flex. Yeah, specific. I would definitely draft Josh Allen in the first round. I I think that there is. 
in a super flex, there are a few. There's a handful of quarterbacks. Is that, he your 101 in a super flex? Not necessarily. You can. It depends on whether it's full PPR, if it's uh, two wide receiver, three wide receiver. Um, you've you've got arguments to be made for Jonathan Taylor, Christian McCaffrey, and um, and Josh Allen, but he's he's basically the 101, 102, or 103 to me. You've got a handful of these quarterbacks who are dual threat great uh, you know you, you've got uh josh allen uh kyler uh mahomes and and uh herbert that will all definitely be in the first round and then probably a, a few more this one's from twitter uh, from marcus marsh do i go quarterback early or wait until rounds four and five so it, it, like let's say you're Oh, this is still super flex. Yeah, this is still okay. it's, it's, I was, it's I was super like, flex Saturday, Jason. I, okay, because uh, I thought we had moved past that. No, and no, I was no. like, getting a quarterback in round four or five is taking a quarterback super early. So, and, and just to be clear, we have a few super flex questions that I really wanted to make sure we address, but the whole mailbag isn't going to be super flex. Oh, thank goodness. So there you go. Thank goodness. All right, let, I'm going to put you in your slot of like sure back half. You're at like the 108. 108, are you – Per the yours in general, or do you feel like you're getting a quarterback there, or you're waiting? No, in that in that spot, I'm probably going to be waiting. I'm probably going to be looking for value later on. Uh, want to leave the draft with three quarterbacks in that situation, and so I will be targeting um, guys that are under, you know, like a Kirk Cousins, um, someone that will drop in, and it's not so m much a matter of the round. It's not so much a matter of, well, is he in the fourth round or the third right. round or the sixth round? It's a matter of the tiers. So when, when, you, when you have the, the UDK and you are looking at our tier-based rankings, you take a look at which quarterbacks you want, you know, what tier of quarterback you want as your first quarterback. Um, and then you wait as long as possible to make sure that, okay, this is the tier I was happy with. All those other guys are gone. I've loaded up on running backs, wide receivers, whether it was three, four, five rounds. But now I'm still getting a quarterback from the tier that I wanted to start with. And then you're going to take a couple uh, later, you know, someone that may maybe maybe your third uh, – well, I was going to say third quarterback is Trevor Lawrence. But Trevor Lawrence is – there's always someone that is such a believer in Trevor Lawrence that he goes pretty darn early. Uh, but someone like that, Tua or, or a, a guy like that. What about Trevor Lawrence or Jameis as your quarterback three? The upside of Trevor Lawrence okay. to be what he was drafted to be is is far higher to me. The thing to focus on and remember in Superflex is it's not like all the all of a sudden the quarterback is everything. It's just it's the supply and the demand of the market. Uh, and Jason is right. You knowing the tiers, that's what helps. Is that's what helps me know when I need to go in on quarterback. If there's still an elite quarterback there and I need to start two of them, I'm very happy to grab one of those in the first or the second round. But if the elite options, in my opinion, are gone, uh, then I'm happy with you know the three guys like and all the you know Matt Ryan. Like mm -hmm. you want the three because you it's much harder to stream the position off of your waiver wire if everyone is starting two of them. And most teams will have three. So you, you, you want to make sure that you got three options that you can stream from those options for the particular matchups. Yeah, and, and it's a lot easier <clears throat> to grab a third quarterback if you wait a little bit and load up on your running backs and wide receivers uh, through those first few rounds. It gives you more flexibility at the end to take a shot on a Matt Ryan or Trevor Lawrence or you know s someone in the Justin Fields. Um, a mobile rushing quarterback with your third quarterback pick. This one's off Instagram from Jacob Batley. Possibility of Rashad Penny being a top 10 running back. Whoo. Okay. So you, uh, possibility of Rashad Penny. I'm a softball myself here being a really good running back for fantasy. I think is decent. Um, just, I want to remind you of the numbers real quick. Yeah, sure. So from week 14 through the end of the season, so that is, this is a five-game sample size, Rashad Penny on pace for 2,281 rushing yards and over 20 rushing touchdowns. Those are top 10 
running back numbers, Jason. Those are definitely top ten running back numbers. Those are those were outlandishly those are top one yes. of all time. <laughs> those are outlandishly um high. The 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 touchdown rate is of course um something that's unrepeatable. They had Russell Wilson and it was a very, very small stretch. But what he did show and what he's shown through his whole career is that when he's been given the opportunity of double digit carries, he has always been good. Um He's the starter to me. He, it is not Ken Walker. Uh, we talked about this a, a little bit. Ken Walker in most drafts and all ADPs from every site that I've seen um, is going well ahead of Rashad Penny. That is insane to me. Um, it you know it's this is a loyal Pete Carroll who's going to give Rashad Penny the the chance. Now, obviously, with the history of Rashad Penny, he could get injured. I mean, duh. And so, if you you want to take that shot on Ken Walker, but. If he's getting double-digit carries every single week, I think Rashad Penny is definitely a you know a top 16, 17 running back. It's hard for me to put him in the top 10 solely because of the quarterback and offense situation around him. He doesn't have a phenomenal offensive line, and things aren't going to open up and be a little bit easier the way that, you know, when you're we've got Russell Wilson behind the line to not stack the box. If, if you're, uh, you know, your aura as a team is I run the ball and your quarterback is Drew Locke or Geno Smith, then it's a pretty easy job for defensive coordinator to be like, let's just put everyone at the box. Um, and I, But I do think Rashad Penny is very undervalued, has a high ceiling, I just don't know if it's top 10. And the, uh, the reminder of we did a you know, a bit of a study looking at second round running backs. I don't know if you remember these numbers off the top of your head, Kyle, or if you can pull them up, but just the percentage of rookie second rounders outscoring the incumbent, it's it's very high. And that was like that was kind of what helped push me towards Javante Williams. Now, Melvin Gordon did finish higher than Javante Williams for the Denver Broncos this past year, but it wasn't like they you know, he, Javante finished at 17 and Melvin Gordon at 13. So historically, the trends are that uh, that, that Ken Walker has a very good shot of finishing higher in the end of the season than Rashad Penny. Granted, this is the same regime that drafted Rashad Penny in the first round, and then Chris Carson, who was just drafted uh the year before or two years i can't remember but in like the seventh Sixth, i think uh, he was like one of the last picks in the entire draft so it seemed like a lock that rashad penny would be the guy to take over the position for the seattle seahawks but no it was in fact chris carson pete carroll notorious for putting who just it doesn't it, it doesn't matter where you came from it doesn't matter what money you're making if you are what i view as the better player you're going on the field so I agree that I, it, the disparity in draft in ADP right now between Rashad Penny and uh and Ken Walker it it should not be that far apart and Rashad Penny should not be going that late. Next question, let's go to let's go to a voicemail here. Hey footballers, my question is in a dynasty league, how do you know when your window has arrived? and when you should go all in to try to win a championship. Thanks. Love the show. All right, so a dynasty question. When do you know, is it time to compete or is it time to sell and prepare for next year? Yeah, I would say that this is an easier question than you think. A lot of teams in the middle of the pack are really, really unsure. And because they're unsure, they're like, I'm not one of the best four teams. I'm not one of the worst four teams. So I don't know what to do. Do I do I tear it down? Do I go? Do I compete? Do I go all in? Go all in. If you're not one of the worst four teams, then you should be competing to win a championship this year. Players get injured. Players off of waivers come out of nowhere. Even in dynasty leagues, um, th there's just crazy things that happen. And I find that the teams who him and Haw and they feel like, well, I've kind of kind of build for the future, but I want to stay good. They're never going to win a championship, and they're never going to be bad enough to just completely, you know, so to to you know get the one on one and and have right. some draft pick save their team. I find that if you go for it all in, trade what you need to trade to get guys to win it now, and you stay good, you have a higher chance of winning a championship, obviously, and then you you can kind of 
just keep doing that forever until all of a sudden, you know, six years, seven years later, maybe then you've run into a place where you've kind of aged out if this is a dynasty team, and then you just tear it down to the nubs and rebuild. But I would say that, you know, 70, 65% at least of, of every league should be trying to compete to win the championship that year. And look at your team. Don't compare your team to, like, don't go find the one super team in your dynasty league and be so trembling in your boots. Uh, well, there's just, my team has no way to compete. They're, I think my team's good, but they cannot compete against that team. That team over there still needs things to go right. They still need injuries and the, the chaos of the NFL season to bounce in their favor. We have had a, a we have had so many super teams oh, yeah. in our dynasty league where I've done it. I went and I looked at the roster and you go How do they why lose? why why are we even gonna play this season? Because no one can possibly compete with that starting lineup over there. And then that team just gets hit with a a wave of of crap luck, and they don't even make the playoffs. Yeah, in, in our league of record, our main league, we had a problem for a good decade where our our rules allowed for teams to just really sell out and become super teams the next year. And we had a run of five or six years in a row where there was a legit super team. They were just – they were like – they traded their soul to get – all of the first round picks and it, it just looked like an unbeatable team one of those teams that I can remember did win the championship and like so five six six sevenths whatever it was did not win right I mean it, it, it's just what we think in the draft season has not played out through 16 now 17 weeks of of NFL games this one's off of Instagram from Danny Donato Elijah Mitchell or Miles Sanders. Ooh, Eliza fun. Mitchell off the 49ers. Miles Sanders started for the Philadelphia Eagles. Where? What's your temperature on those two guys? Um, I, I, I hear everything that you and Andy have been saying about Miles Sanders. Uh, the, the touchdown regression to the mean, he should absolutely get more touchdowns. You're not having Boston Scott with seven. I just can't get myself to believe that Miles Sanders is going to get it done this year, and so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty hot for Elijah Mitchell, especially where he's being drafted. Are, a lot of people are scared of Elijah Mitchell. Well, and I get it, right? He was injured so much, and it wasn't like he missed the majority of the season. It was just that it was like three different injuries, and the guy couldn't stay on the field. But at the same time, Kyle Shanahan loves this guy. He fits the system perfect, and when he was on the field. He performed great for fantasy. Uh, the beat now this is scary, uh, so <laughs> be careful. The beat reporters are saying he's got a clear lockdown on the job. Uh oh. Now, if you're unfamiliar with uh -oh. the history of beat reporters in San Francisco, they pretty much always get it wrong. Um, but uh, that is the current word out of town: is that he's got the lockdown on the job, and it makes sense from what you saw last year. He had the job on complete lockdown, so it's a good running team. And I think they're going to want to run the ball like even more than last year because Trey Lance is coming in and I think they're just going to establish the run like crazy. Like that's that's all Kyle Shanahan's going to do. And I could see Elijah Mitchell getting 20 carries a game and then he'll break and then take a couple weeks and then get 20 carries a game again. So I am far more on the Elijah M M Mitchell side. I have Mitchell slightly ahead of Miles Sanders, but to the point of you know, running back 24 for Mitchell, running back 26 for Sanders. That's that's not a that's not a huge discrepancy. That's of like some drafts based on my team, maybe I take Sanders, some drafts I might take Mitchell. Uh I I do have like pretty strong confidence that Elijah Mitchell will be the guy where I think it's not just Elijah Mitchell the the injuries of the past year that have people concerned is the fact that it seems to be a new RB1 every single year for Kyle Shanahan. Now, some of those things are, in fact, injury-related, but but TDP was a third-round pick, Yes. Kyle? Okay, Jason, thank you. Kyle, do better. Jason, yeah, seriously, great Kyle. work. Great was, draft knowledge. I was so quick on that. <laughs> but Also, Chris Carson was a seventh-round pick.
Yeah, yeah uh, but I'm saying, so TDP was a third-round pick, but Trey Sermon was a third-round pick last year, and he didn't seem to fit the mold of of what Kyle Shanahan prefers in a running back. And everyone was like, oh, what? But draft capital says that Trey Sermon should be the guy, and then he was, in fact, not the guy. It was going to be Raheem Mostert. Mostert gets hurt in week one, and Elijah Mitchell, out of nowhere, you know, it was seemingly out of nowhere, comes and takes the the job away from Sermon. So I think that that is part of the concern for the fantasy community is, will it actually be Elijah Mitchell? I still think it will be. When you say doesn't fit the mold, what you mean, if people don't know what the Kyle Shanahan mold is, is very, very fast. Yeah, speed. <laughs> that's that's I, like speed. all that matters. You can be big, you can be small, you just... Do you run uh, under or over 4-4? Yeah, no, you're out. Uh, yeah, none of this. You're out. In Shanahan's house. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with more of your questions. Welcome back, everyone. Let's get into another voicemail. Hey, this is Austin. I just am um, curious if Adam Gase uh, was a jet log. Thanks. Love you. Bye. Oh, my goodness. Uh, very good. Well done. Okay. Number two. So, Adam Gase, legendary, uh, terrible head coach in the NFL. Right. Received the 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 nickname of being number two. Because mm -hmm. he's a turd. <laughs> I mean, I I don't want to be too crass. He's just a b-hole. Yeah, he, he was also the b-hole yeah. uh, on this team. Coach the Jets. We recently had a discussion about uh, jet logging. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, I yeah. I, I guess mean, this so. is it, no. It's a really astute. Our our listeners are obviously very astute. Um, they're wise, and and I think, I mean, I, we've never given out a listener of the week on the main fantasy footballers sure. ever because that's really something for the the footcast. But Mike. R wait i mean i'm just saying are you serious we can break molds here and give away a listener of the week on the main show listener of the week well congratulations uh i did not catch the name there but the first ever listener of the week for the the main fantasy footballers podcast, congratulations! Listen to the footcast. And Call your parents immediately and tell them of the honor that you have received. <laughs> that's ridiculous. The parents are listening. Oh, that's they a great know point. they're going to call great... you pretty soon and congratulate you. This one's off of Instagram from a par multiple people. They want to know DJ Moore or Terry McLaurin. Oh yes, this is great. DJ Moore got the upgrade well, as we see it an upgrade of. Baker Mayfield. Now let's we gotta I'm I feel very confident that it will be make Baker Mayfield. But if if they could have this training camp battle, even if they have that, Baker Mayfield's gonna win. Yeah. So does anybody let's just in lock this, that in. Does anybody in this studio think there's a decent chance that Baker Mayfield is not the starter for this team? I'm curious. We got a lot of heads shaking. Okay, they that's said three no. notes. That's stupid of you. I was going to bet a $100 this. You win if I'm wrong. <laughs> nothing else on the line. But you guys uh, are cowards. Uh-oh. Al Borland is... I like a good bet, but I'm not taking that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So DJ Moore right now is our consensus wide receiver 12. Uh, oh, so Jason, you got him inside your top 12 now. You have him at wide receiver 11. I do. Do you remember where he was before the... Yeah, he the was Baker news. I think he was 16. Okay. Um, so he made a decent jump for you in in the Bulldog uh, underdog fantasy league that Kyle and I are playing. Um, we had the choice between DJ Moore and Terry McLaurin. And, you know, it's best ball, big upside. Um, the, the big weeks get in. Touchdowns are going to play a lot more heavily. And we decided to go Terry McLaurin. Now, this was before the Baker Mayfield trade. And I can tell you I have regrets I because uh. we were we were talking about it. I even mentioned like, man, the quarterback could change here. We went with McLaurin because he did get a quarterback upgrade. Now, neither one of these guys got a Russell Wilson upgrade. Obviously, we are not, you know, saying this guy's going to be either one of them are going to be fantasy superstars to the moon. But when you compare just DJ Moore and Tara McLaurin, 
without any quarterback, and you just say, who's more athletic? They're both super athletic. Who's more athletic? It's DJ Moore. Who's a, a better route runner? I think it's DJ Moore. Who's Ooh. just a better wide receiver? I think DJ Moore. Now you get a guy who is coming in and can throw touchdowns. I mean, Sam Darnold, his last two years has been yeah. like – under 10. I'm saying like his uh, touchdown percentage has oh, been okay. like 2.3 or something – unfathomably atrocious so the touchdowns I think are going to be in the favor of DJ Moore I'm, I'm gonna bet on the talent I love both guys but I will take DJ Moore more over Terry McLaurin 2.5 and 2.2 the past two seasons uh, touchdown right there for Samuel Darnold yucky doo doo <laughs> uh I mean I, I like both players but I'm I will buy more into the, the upside of DJ Moore I had him ranked higher than Terry McLaurin before what I saw is the upgrade of Baker, so I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with DJ Moore. Uh, off of Instagram, uh, Chazavelli. Oh, I could have gone with Chazavelli, but I went with Chazavelli. It sounds so much better. And yeah. if it is Chazavelli, I would, you know, re reevaluate. Yeah, yeah consider. just workshop what Mike's talking about. Chazavelli. Oh, very nice. Thoughts on rookie Damian Pierce being the lead back over Marlon Mack for the Houston Texans. Well, the depth chart is very nice for Damian Pierce. Yeah, uh, you got Marlon Mack. You got Sexy Rexy. He's Sexy still there. Rex Burkhead is still there. Uh, do we have anybody else that we need to worry about for the Houston Texans? <laughs> well, I would say probably not, but what the Houston Texans do like to do in this era is have about 10 people at every skill position that are all mediocre so and, and battle it out across um, – many oh, aged vets. Royce Freeman's there. Oh, is is he exactly? And a Goomba Wale. Oh, like, give me more. <laughs> How many more? Uh they were actually allowed um a lot of people don't know this. They were given permission uh because of everything that's happened with them by the NFL. They get an 83 man roster <laughs> on Sundays. Uh everyone else has 53, but they're like, "Man, you don't have any talent, right. so you can really shotgun approach uh your roster." So, I mean, the reality here for Damian Pierce is you can't find a much better backfield to beat. Marlon Mack was a good running back, a good young running back. Mm -hmm. He projects to be the starter, but he's coming off of an Achilles injury. He's a year removed now. That is hopefully great. This is the year of Achilles information. Um, we are going to learn so much now that we have Cam Akers a year removed. We've got Marlon Mack a year removed, and we've got you know the James Robinson, yeah, late, but also had no athleticism to start and was a great running back. So it's like, does he need it? Does does he right. need Achilles? We don't know. Um, so we're going to learn a lot, but yeah, I mean, uh, this is a winnable depth chart. the The problem for Damian Pierce is. History says that when you are not, you know, a, a day one, day two draft pick, it just doesn't really work out for you. It's it, tough, yes. You know, it's like there's a lot of guys that are like this. Tyler Algier um, for the Falcons, that's not a bad situation to try to crack a relevant role, but history is not on the side of fourth round and later draft picks at running back. I mean, and, and on top of that, he has to overcome the Houston Texans – team as a whole now I like they had you know uh, pretty sure Rex Burkhead had one or two spike weeks where he just got a bunch of touchdowns and a bunch of volume Damian Pierce also working against him is I mean four-year player out of Florida his production profile is not what you are hoping for for uh like there's not one season where you're seeing a huge market share of attempts touchdowns or receptions Tyler Algier at least his last year at BYU great like mm -hmm. a great production profile heading into the season where you can get kind of excited now but granted Florida is a they're a weird team when it comes to these things and they're and the overloading a player Pierce is interesting to me like when I when I watched him he looks like he's shifty and has juice and I do think by the end of the season, he will be the guy. I don't know how long it takes. I don't. I don't know what Marlon Mack has left because when he was on the field, I mean they kept they kept insisting for the Colts because they were trying to showcase him for a trade. They kept insisting that Marlon Mack was ready to play last year. He was not. If you watched him take any snaps for the Colts, 
So I think that there is a strong chance that Damian Pierce is the starter. There's a decent chance he's the starter before week one, too. So he's interesting to me as a late-round flyer. Uh, let's see. Next question comes in from – this one's from Twitter from at Rich Homie Tom. Do you think Isaiah Spiller has a chance to eat away some carries from Austin Eckler this year? Yeah. Isaiah Spiller being everyone's – by everyone, I mean everyone else uh, – People loved Isaiah Spiller. Jason, you you I, were on board. I was a hundred percent on board with Isaiah Spiller when it comes to film. I thought he was, you know, he was my running back three uh, in the pre-draft process. Spiller can catch the ball; is a great pass catcher. Uh, has the size that I prefer in an NFL running Very back. Very young, two hundred and seventeen pounds. He is not yet twenty-one years old. He can catch the ball. Loved Isaiah Spiller. And then, and then he plummeted in the NFL draft. The combine happened where he ran a four six nine, Woof. and it was like, oh, that's not good. He was bad on his speed score, bad on his burst score, and it was like, well, we'll see what the NFL says. Does the NFL say that that athleticism is a real deal breaker for them, or are they still going to take him? Because in that pre NFL draft process, he was often mocked, mock drafted in the second round as yes. a day two pick. Yes. So had a lot of hype, has great film, good good production, and is very young. I love him. Damian Pierce was drafted above uh, Isaiah Spiller. He's a fourth-round pick. Lands in a great situation for him, though, because outside of Austin Eckler, I do think that there is a lack of running back talent oh, he's, there. He's the number two running back for the Chargers. And over the past few seasons, with their actions, the Chargers have said, we want to have – a compliment to Austin Eckler. We we can't completely wear him out. So they took the chance here for Isaiah Spiller. Y yes, I do think that by the end of the year, there's a chance that Isaiah Spiller has become more of a uh, a thorn for the fantasy value for Austin Eckler than we are we're hoping for right now. So I uh, yes, I I do see Spiller eating away some carries, he's eating away some some goal line opportunities That's the as issue. well. Uh, Austin Eckler had an out freaking rageous 20 touchdowns last year. That's not happening again under any situation, but now you can actually look and say, well, shoot, there's a clear situation where Isaiah Spiller, the 217 pound rookie can come in on the goal line and maybe, you know, it, it's funny cause he, he is the big body guy, but I didn't really, if I'm being honest, see on film, like the pile pusher. For the big bodied guy, I did, I saw a slow, not st strong running back. I did I did not. I don't know what film you guys were watching and I was watching because we saw two very different things. Which is that's the difficulty of film. It is so subjective in what each each watcher is looking for. I saw a good receiving back with big body, and I love that. <laughs> That's that's basically okay. what I saw. So with big body, <laughs> uh, um, so uh, yeah, he's a guy that I think will eat in a little bit to Eckler, but not enough to make an impact on like not drafting Eckler in the uh, around in the, the sixth first. spot. Yeah. All right, this one's off of Instagram from Mac Daddy three hundred one. Can you give us a reason why Jonathan Taylor should not be the one hundred one? Sure, easily. He will not score as many points as Christian McCaffrey on a per game basis. Okay. Christian McCaffrey is otherworldly when it comes to fantasy production because of the volume he gets, the receptions he gets. Uh, he cannot score touchdowns and still dominate. So, um Jonathan Taylor is going to be great, but he needs those touchdowns. He his opportunities were outrageously high. His goal line work was yes. as good as we've seen in a decade. 29 carries inside the five. Yeah, I mean, that is That was first. Second place would be James Conner with 19. Yeah. And you can go back, you know, multiple years. I was, I, I, like Jason's saying, essentially a decade, and you have maybe like two or three guys who have seen anywhere close to that level of carries inside the five. There takes but, a lot of luck. To, sure, get, yeah, to yeah, get your absolutely. team in that position. To just be inside the five, take some luck that you got there but didn't score from outside of there. 
some of that's going to change. He's not going to get 30 carries inside the five again. So the touchdowns will probably come down for him. He is still my number one because of the youth and the um, injury history with Christian McCaffrey. But if you want to say why shouldn't he be the 101, it's to me because his upside is not the same as Christian McCaffrey. And while the I do think that those carries inside the five, they more than likely will come down. How much is it catastrophic? I don't think so. Like he's still, uh, he's my number two running back behind McCaffrey because I just want to look in the mirror and hate myself and <laughs> take McCaffrey for a third straight year in a row and and feel that pain. Uh, on the upside, though, for Jonathan Taylor, Matt Ryan is in town now. I think Matt Ryan's a much better quarterback than Carson Wentz, but what I do know for sure is Matt Ryan historically has we've seen huge running back reception totals from Matt Ryan. It's and this is exactly like go back a couple years, you have Phillip Rivers. Matt Ryan is not going to be trying to extend the play. If the play is breaking down, Matt Ryan is going to throw the ball to Jonathan Taylor or and Naeem Hines as well. But I'm saying on first and second down, when Taylor's the back and it's not a run play, he, I think that his reception numbers are very safe. Last year, 53 targets. 40 catches turned into 360 yards. I mean, the guy's a big play waiting to happen. I think there's a chance that he – the 40? I think there's a chance he's in the 50 reception total this year. I, I would I would agree completely. His receptions should go up. Uh, I, I still have Jonathan Taylor. I actually have him above Christian McCaffrey in my rankings due to, um, you know, the, the youth and the injury risk of Christian McCaffrey. But I, I would agree that, you know, look, Carson Wentz, when he was the quarterback, he looks to extend plays. He scrambles around – and look, he's like, how can how can I buy time to throw it as far as I can? And how not can only I, as far as I can, where's the triple covers that I can throw the ball into? Well, the nice thing is that he can overthrow. So it's like, I can overthrow all three defenders. <laughs> Check this out. Um, it, it You know, he seems like a player like that in like, you know, you're just out on a field playing some, you know, just, some just street ball? Pick, some pickup street ball. He'd be like the guy that would scramble around, scramble around, and then just punt it. Just, just <laughs> see you later, ball. It's going to be the same result. Um, so, yeah, you, you should have more receptions for Jonathan Taylor, but that's kind of the case for uh, – it's hard to have a question that's like, tell me why to not draft the great young yes. stud back. All right, this one's off of Twitter from at Mendez4109. Redraft keeper question, half PPR. Keep DeAndre Swift for the 301 or – A.J. Dillon at 8-12. Ooh, man. So small value on Swift or couple round value on A.J. Dillon. So I, I, w I would argue that it's a small round value. I think Swift is – the more that drafts get going, I think he's going at the very beginning of the second. So it's like a, it's like a full round. Sure. Uh, 201 to 301. A.J. Dillon in the – Eighth, basically the ninth, the eight twelve is exceptional value. Um, AJ Dillon, I think personally, has been overdrafted for where I've seen him in in some of these leagues. We it, were talking yes on yesterday's footcast that I like AJ Dillon a lot, and then the ADP when we did a uh, we did a best ball draft with Kyle and Betts for the for the DFS podcast, and I. I could not believe A.J. Dillon's ADP. It was very inflated. Yeah, A.J. Dillon has been drafted uh, very high. But I will say this. I think that that is – he is the type of player that is kind of different between a home league and a best ball league because he's got that built in. You know that Aaron Jones is going to miss a couple games. You don't have to worry about when you get him. 6'10 and sleeper right now. Right. So if, if you're talking a home league, 6'10 to 8'10 value is not as is actually less value right. than second round to third round. So I'll take DeAndre Swift in, in your normal keeper league. For me, this isn't even a question of value. This is DeAndre Swift, uh, he's finished as a top 20 running back both years uh, that he's played in the NFL. He doesn't need... He does not need the situation around him to change to finish as a top five running back. A.J. Dillon can be a top 24 guy, but to jump into that range of true league winning running back, his situation has to change. Aaron Jones has to 
miss some time or A.J. Dillon's role has to change dramatically and all goal line work goes to him instead of Aaron Jones while maintaining some of the, the passing work that he was receiving towards the end of the year. So th this is a easier – this is an easy question for me. I get you see these a running back, a useful running back in the eighth, and it's it's juicy. I totally understand that. But DeAndre Swift – DeAndre Swift can be a league-winning running back where Dylan needs some stuff to happen for that to Yeah, they can place. both be a league-winning running back, but one already projects to be. Right, right, exactly. Uh, let's. We got one more voicemail here. Let's hit it. Hey, Lawlers. This is Tyler calling from Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, uh, hey! I'm going into my first dynasty startup draft, and I was wondering if the sixth round is too early to take Chris Olave. Uh, love the show. Thank you, guys. All right, so Tyler from Phoenix, Arizona. Dynasty startup question. Chris Olave in the sixth round. So I uh, I know myself and Kyle really like uh, Olave. We are, um, I think, higher than consensus on Olave for uh, both redraft and dynasty leagues. So the sixth round is really just a matter of – ADP. Let me pull up uh, where current dynasty startup ADPs are going. Okay, because off the top of my head, without ADP, Olave in the sixth feels fantastic. Like when you're in a dynasty startup, these first round really young wide receivers, even though you have no proof that they're actually good in the NFL, they they get skyrocketed into the early rounds. So I I think him dropping in. I would see that as him dropping into the six, and then I'd be very happy to take him. Yeah, and and you are exactly right. Right now, um, he's basically the sixty third uh, player, so he's he's going there right now. I don't think that's too early to draft him. He's no. extremely talented. Um, they gave up so much to get him. He projects to be a really important part of the offense. It, it's funny though, Garrett Wilson in in current. Um, best ball drafts is going behind Olave and I was I was questioning myself on this today because you got a guy that's higher drafted and if you look at the receiving core around them it's easy to argue that Olave has more competition right like you know you got Jarvis Landry and Michael Thomas now obviously if Michael Thomas is injured and Jarvis Landry is old and washed whatever but those are two good NFL wide receivers Whereas over with Garrett Wilson, his college teammate who was drafted ahead of him, you have Elijah Moore Elijah, and Corey Davis. Elijah, Elijah Moore, unknown. Corey Davis, meh, at best, meh. And so it's like, and and then you could you could say, oh, but Zach Wilson. It's like, oh, but Jameis Winston. Like it's not like either of these guys are are great. So I think both of those uh, rookie wide receivers are good. And and here's just a dynasty uh, trick. Uh, or uh, a little tip of knowledge. Well, is it a tip or is it a trick? A lot of tips are tricks. So I'm going to say both. Okay, so a tip is always a trick? Can it, or is a trick always no, a tip? No, a tip is not always a trick. A, a, a trick, at, and I'm using that word not as like, gotcha, okay. uh, I think is, is usually <laughs> a tip. So I'm going to give you both here a tip and a trick, which is uh, first round rookie wide receivers are – Always great. Always great in Dynasty when it comes to value. It doesn't matter what he does this year. His value will go up next year. If he sucks, it's going to be fine. Like, yeah, he first will, he round, retain. rookie wide receivers retain their value. So there's really no harm in drafting him. If you don't believe in him after this year, you can still move him for good value uh, because it's just kind of universally true for first-round rookie wide receivers in Dynasty. All right, we're going to get out of here on this question off of YouTube from Dr. Jones. Is that an, <laughs> Dr. Jones, is that an indie thing? I don't know. Keep trade cut. Jalen Waddle, DJ Moore, Mike Williams. Let's put your DJ Moore love to the test, Jason. Mm. Big okay. Mike Williams yeah. playing with Big Herb. Uh, I, I, love, uh, I love me some Mike Williams. I'm going to take this question, though, to be not best ball, but your redraft league. Yes. And if that's the case, I want DJ Moore over Mike Williams. I think Mike Williams' okay. variance will be higher. I know DJ Moore's has he, he has also been a high variance guy, big games, a disappearing X, but I think that it will be more consistent. So I will trade Mike Williams 
and I will cut Jalen Waddle. Are you the opposite? I am keeping Mike Williams, trading DJ Moore, and cutting Jalen Waddle. Well, there you go. Unfortunately. That is going to do it for today's Saturday show. Remember, the Ultimate Draft Kit is available and getting updated very often, ultimatedraftkit.com. We hope you enjoyed this fine episode, and we hope that grass was mowed to perfection. Stay safe, everybody. We will see you next week. The band will be back together. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. Ballers.